Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnici. I'm CCNA and CCMP certified instructor. On this video, we are covering new topics added to the CCNA course 200-125. And here we are arriving to the last two sections. And this section is 4.12, Network Programming. Upon completion of this section, you should be able to explain why network programmability is necessary for evolving networks. A control plane and data plane. A network device, like a router or a switch, contains the following planes. Control plane, this is a typically regarded as a brain of the device. In here, it's used to make the forwarding decisions. In here, we contain layer 2 and layer two, 3 root forwarding mechanism, such as routing protocol, neighbor tables, and topology tables. IPv4 and IPv6 routing tables, spanning tree protocol, ARP tables. Then we have a data plane. This is also known as forwarding plane. Typically, the switch fabric contains a various network port on the device. The data plane of each device is used to forward traffic flows. There's another plane, they haven't put this on the screen, but we have a called the management plane. And that's how we connect to the uh, router or switch to manage the device. But the important things here they need to remember is control plane, that's our brain of our device, and the data planes. So here we decide, okay, well, traffic, traffic from this source and to go into this destination, uh, we're going to take this interface ingress and egress. So we decide in where our uh, traffic going to go. Cisco switching mechanism. Cisco has three types of switching mechanism. First is called process switching, then fast switching, then Cisco express forwarding. Process switching first. Earlier switching method. This applies to both routers and multi-layer switches. This is an older packet forwarding mechanism. When the packet arrives on the interface, it is forwarded to the control plane, to the brains of the device, where the CPU will examine the route in the routing table, will determine the exit interface and forward the packet, and tells which path is the egress interface. It does this for every packet even the destination is the same for a stream of packets. So each packet as it comes in, it goes to the CPU, CPU does the checks the routing table and tells the where the exit interface. But this way we are every packet is going to the CPU and is bothering the CPU to find out the egress interface. Next is fast switching. As a router had to process more packets, it was determined the process switching was not fast enough. We don't ever see process switching anymore. Next evolution in packet switching was a fast switching, which this applies to both routers and multi-layer switches. The first packet comes in and it's process switched like before, right? So it goes to the control plane where the brains are located. The brains looks at the routing table and says, okay, well for this packet, use this as an egress interface, but not like a process switching, a fast switching will create a fast forwarding cache. So subsequent packets, they don't have to go to the control packets and to control plane anymore. The next packet in the flow are forwarded using the cache and without the CPU intervention. Cisco Express forwarding is preferred and default Cisco IOS packet forwarding mechanism for all routers and switches. Now Cisco Express forwarding. Now Cisco Express forwarding is a Cisco proprietary. Again, we have a control plane and we have the data plane. On the data plane, the Cisco Express forwarding will build a FIB table. Ceph copies the routing table to the forwarding information base called FIB. Ceph creates an adjacency table which contains all the layer 2 information a router would have to consider when forwarding packets such as Ethernet destination MAC address. The adjacency table is created from ARP table. So Ceph will create two tables, forwarding information base which is derived from the routing table and then adjacency table, which is derived from the ARP table. And they will create, the Ceph will have this pre-created. So that as the packet come in, they don't have to go to the control plane to bother the, the CPU. So as the packet come in, they go straight out of the e egress interface. Ingress, straight out of egress. Network virtualization. Two major network architectures have been developed to support network virtualization. First, software defined networking. This is a network architecture that virtualizes the network. The goal of the software-defined networking is to enable cloud and network engineers and administrator 
to respond quickly to change in business requirements via a centralized controlled console. Cisco application-centric infrastructure, ACIs, a purpose-built hardware solution for integrating cloud, computing, and data center management. There are some other virtualization, network virtualization technologies, some of which are included as components to SDN and ACIs, like for example OpenFlow. This approach was developed at Stan Stanford University to manage traffic between routers, switches, wireless access points, and controllers. OpenStack. OpenStack is often used with the Cisco ACIs. OpenStack deployment consists of a Nexus 9000 spine and leaf topology. Other components will include interface to the routing system I2RS, transparent interconnection of lots of links, Trill, Cisco Fabric Path, FP, and IEEE 802.1 AQ, Short Path Bridging, or SBB. Now, software defined networking architecture, while well, traditionally routers and switches, the control plane and data plane function occurs in the same device. So you have the control plane, which is the brain of the device, and the data plane, which contains the, the forwarding information. Software defined networking moves the control plane from each networking device to central network intelligence and policy making ent entity called SDN controller. Now, this is amazing. What we are doing, we are taking all the brains of all our routers and switches and we are sticking to this uh, centralized controller where we can control the brain. Now, like for example, we say, okay, well, for this routing table, for this router, it's going to be like this, forward information base, forward information base. So in one place, we build in all that forward information base for each of our devices. So SDN controllers defines the data flow that occur in SDN data plane. So it builds that controller will build the from the control plane and it will define the data plane for each device that is controlling. So routers and switches and so on. A flow is a sequence of packet traversing a network that shares a set of hardware header fields values. All complex functions are performed by the controller. The controller populates flows tables and switch, switches manages the flow tables. SDN controllers communicate with OpenFlow compatible switches using the OpenFlow protocol. This protocol uses TLS transport layer security to secure send control plane communication over the network. Each OpenFlow switch connects to other OpenFlow switches. To the switch, a, a flow is a sequence of packets that matches a specific entry in a flow table. The table serves the following purposes. The flow table matches the incoming packets to a particular flow and specifies the function that are to be performed on the packet. A master table is triggered in a variety of performance related application actions on a flow. A flow table might direct a flow to a group table which may trigger a variety of actions that affect one or more flows. So Cisco has developed the application-centric infrastructure to help organizations that do not have the desire or skills to program using SDN tools to automate the network. So Cisco has made this application that you can start configuring it even if you don't know how to configure the SDN. Because SDN is going to require your technician to be familiar with a, a Java programming, C programming, Python programming. Maybe you, have, you don't have the, the time or the money to invest on the technician like that. So you go and purchase application-centric infrastructure, which comes from the Cisco, that you can manage the SDN without actually being able to configure it. So Cisco ACI is a purpose-built hardware solution for integrating cloud computing and data center management. At a high level, the policy element of the networking is removed from the data plane. The simpli this simplifies the way the data center networks are created. Spine and leaf topology. In modern data centers, an alternative to the core aggregation and access layer network topology has emerged known as leaf and spine. Cisco ACI's fabric is composed of the A APICs and the Cisco Nexus 9000 series switches using two-tier spine leaf topology. The leaf switch always attaches to the spine. For example, that's our leaf switches, Cisco 9000, 9300 switches, attaching to 9500 switches on the spine. 
Similarly, the spine switches only attach to the leaf and the core, but they don't touch the, attach to each other. Same as the leaf switches, they don't attach to each other. The spine switches, they don't attach to each other. They just go to the core. In the two-tier topology, everything is one hop from everything else. So PC, if he's talking to another PC here, goes to this switch, one hop, then connects it to the other switch, and that's it. Go to the destination. So SDN types, they have a device-based SDN. Device-based SDN, devices are programmable by application running on the device itself or on a server in the network. Cisco 1PK is an example of the device-based SDN. It enables programmers to build application uses C and Java with Python to integrate and interact with the Cisco devices. Then we have a control-based SDN. Control-based SDN uses a centralized controller that has knowledge of all devices in the network. The application can inf interface with a controller rep responsible for managing the devices and manipulating traffic flows throughout the network. So here you are controlling from the controller, you're controlling how the traffic path is going to go from the source to destination on your network. The Cisco Open SDN controller is commercially a distribution of open daylight. The Cisco Open SDN controller is a commercial distribution of open daylight. SDN type policy based SDN, similar to control based SDN, where a centralized controller has a view of all devices in the network. Policy based SDN includes an additional policy layer that operates at a higher level of abstraction. It uses built in application that automate advanced configuration tasks via guided workflow and user friendly GUI with no programming skills required. So, policy based SDN, you can use an uh, application in the GUI that you don't have any programming skills. So application policy infrastructure controller enterprise module feature, this is how it looks. You will see all your devices and then you can control from the uh, from the controller how the flow of the traffic is going to flow. You remove the brain so the devices they don't have to think of what you decide in the flow of the traffic. So policy based SDN is the most robust providing for simple mechanism to control and manage policies across the entire network. This will have this fill of uh, the Cisco APIC EM provides the following features device discovery, device inventory, host inventory, topologies, policy, and policy analysis. Examines ACLs on device searching for redundant or conflicting or shadow entries. Examines specific ACLs on a path between two, no two end nodes displaying any potential issues. So here, like for example, because he knows all the devices and he has got the brain for all the devices, he will check, okay, well, what happens if I have an ACL, if I, from this device, he wants to send to this device, is there a problem with that access control list? Okay, this slide is the same as the previous one. Okay, thank you very much for watching. Please have a look at my other videos and don't forget to subscribe. This has been Astrid Krasnici and bye-bye.